Alright guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video, my 4 valve swapped Mustang GT. Alright, so like I said, today we're going to be working on the 4 valve swap Mustang GT. Recently, I got the exhaust welded up. I think I did that about a month ago. And during that time, I had them weld in an extra bong for a AEM wideband sensor that's going to help us with tuning the car. I already had the sensor installed and I had the cable tied up out of the way in the engine bay. So all I had to do was install the gauge, get a positive and negative to it. And we now have a air to fuel ratio gauge inside the car from a very good company, which is AEM and it's working which brings us to our first issue we have 24 pound injectors in this car from the factory four valve motor now the issue is we're using a mustang gt MAF, and we have the o2 sensors unplugged the reason why we have the upstream o2 sensors unplugged is because the car wouldn't run it wouldn't even get through the uh through the gears when you have those um, plugged in also when you unplug them it runs off of the map and a base map so it's gonna run a lot richer that is actually our issue now today this thing is running between 10s and 12s just idling that is way too much fuel for just idling uh, it's way too much usually when you get that 10 between 10 to 12 afr you're a boosted motor under boost and, and I'm talking about wide open throttle type, that's your, what's your AFR supposed to be. At idle, something like this is supposed to be around, I'd say 15, 16, somewhere on the leaner side. And um, I usually hear like a plop, 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 plop. That's most likely where we're getting that miss from in this motor as well. This thing is running mega rich. So in the very near future, I'm going to be contacting the tuner now that the gauge is hooked up and uh, we're gonna get this thing tuned so that we can plug in those O2 sensors and actually get a solid map on it and get this thing running the way it's supposed to be running and not like this. So uh, in the very near future, we're gonna be, like I said, contacting the tuner and getting a tune for this thing. But before we can do that, even though I have the gauge installed, uh, what we're going to be doing is, uh, the reason why we have the AEM wideband sensor in this car is because it has an output. So. I am going to be tuning with an SCT X4 tuner and they have inputs. So the output from my AEM is going to connect to the SCT so that when I send the tune or when I send the data log file to the tuner, he can see what the AFRs are doing as we come through the RPM range. So that's going to be vital in getting this thing tuned right. And from what I've seen, four valve swaps with uh, factory, not much mods are going to make like 285 to the wheel and you might not say that's a lot but that's actually going to be like anywhere between 330 340 to the crank so that is actually very decent horsepower compared to the stock two valves that make like 265 to the crank so that's that's no power they might be putting down 225 to the wheel so this thing is going to be an absolute rocket ship after we get it tuned but let me show you the gauge in the car and let me show you how bad these afrs are Alrighty, so we are now in the Mustang GT um, that we four valve swapped and this is the AEM gauge. It's just there temporarily because I don't have a radio, but we're going to mount it somewhere else. I'm going to crank it up. I have the SCT on just to figure out what the alternator is doing because I always got to rev it to um, get the alternator charging. Show you what I mean. Alternator is at 12, you give it a rev. It's not even coming on now. Someone has got to have a fix for that. I think my regulator is going bad um, in the alternator is why it's doing that. But look at my AFRs at under a thousand RPM. My AFRs are 11. This thing is stupid rich. So we gotta get that dealt with. Other than that, everything seems to be working fine on the car. 
but I definitely believe that's where that miss is coming from because this thing is running ridiculously rich uh, at idle. If you guys are new here to the channel, this is my 03 Mustang GT four valve swap. It's not much of a look on the outside. We're trying to get the motor right before we paint it up, change the top, because we got to do a good amount of cosmetics to this thing, but pretty basic. Um, coolant crossover delete kit in the front from MMR. That's where my coolant temp sensor is housed now. We have a cooling head mod in the back to bridge those back cylinders so we don't get any hot spots. 24 pound injectors. Uh, we have a Mustang GT MAF in it. Uh, this is an 03 Marauder intake manifold. That's why the intakes come in this way. And I relocated the battery over there. For trans, we have the factory Mustang GT trans and uh, we have a pretty basic clutch in it as well. So just your pretty basic run in the mill four valve swap. All right, so as you guys have just seen, the four valve swap is definitely running and driving. Um, it is missing. And I, I know for sure that all of my coils are firing, all of my injectors are firing, and I have good compression on all cylinders. I'm pretty sure that this thing is running massively rich. That amount of fuel at idle is not good for any motor. And it probably has been washing my rings, my piston rings off the wall. This is a freshly rebuilt motor. So we actually need to get this thing running right. We don't need it to stay like this because it can cause damage to the motor running it rich like that. So we need to get someone to tune this and I already know who's gonna tune it. It's a guy in the States, we're gonna remote tune, which means I'm gonna data log. I'm gonna send it to him. He's gonna look at it. He's gonna adjust things. He's gonna send it back to me. I flash a tune on it and we do that back and forth until we get this thing absolutely perfect. So. For right now, that is the dilemma we're faced with. We don't want to continue driving it in this state because that is really way too rich and we need to get this thing sorted out. Okay, so I quickly Google searched it just now and my AFRs are supposed to be around 14.7 and 15.1 between there at idle. And this thing is sitting at 11, if not 10. This is ridiculous. Okay, so. We definitely know this is the, the tuning part of this build is definitely the next step and we are almost ready for that. Only thing we need to do is make the Y band communicate with the SCTX4 and then we'd be good to go. I'm actually going to make a separate video on that and show you guys step by step how to do that because you'll need to know that when dealing with these Mustangs from 96 to uh, I think 2004 with the with the four valve and two valve motors, you're gonna have issues with tuners, especially if you remote tune it, because um, a lot of tuners need AFRs to tune, and these cars came factory with no AFR reading. So even when you tap into the computer with any tuner, it's not gonna allow you to read the AFRs. But that's the advantage of using an SCT X4 is that. The AEM and the X4 can communicate. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, like I said, in the next video. But for right now, that's all I have for you guys for today. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Always remember, don't drift without your dreams, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.